I think every fan of Love Island will have to admit that <clears throat> the one thing that Love Island lacks the most is diversity. Love Island, how will the fifth series be different? That's right. It's all about diversity, though. That's what it's about, is diversity. Because apparently, the only way you could make a show like Love Island more diverse is by having a sort of Benetton-level um, pick-and-mix of different skin tones. And that will make it diverse. But bearing in mind that it doesn't matter what, what, what or it doesn't matter your ancestry or anything, um, regardless of any of that, it doesn't matter what skin tone you have, it doesn't matter what skin color you have, it doesn't matter your religion, it doesn't matter about your sexuality, none of it matters. And um, because you, you like close your eyes and it's just the same idiot talking over and over again, it's it's just vacuous, na um, narcissistic idiots. Um, who go on Love Island? I mean, that, that's that's pretty much it. Now, I have defended Love Island before and said, you know, that people, you know, there was outrage that um, some people were on Love Island and didn't know what Brexit was or something like that. It's like, well, good, good for them. They're living a happy life. More, more props to them for not caring. I don't care, and neither should they, you know. But I will say that, come on, like, you know, you know fucking Baz from Newcastle. It doesn't matter whether he's like, you know, Sri Lankan. Or Ebo, like he, he, he's 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 still going to be Baz from Newcastle. He's going to be a vacuous imbecile. That's that's straight up. There's there's nothing diverse about Love Island. No matter how many different types of people you put in it, that just because of skin tone, sexuality, and religion, like it literally will make no difference. It will still be not a very diverse show. There's nothing diverse about the sort of mentality that is attracted. To want to being on Love Island, okay? It's ridiculous. There's nothing. It's, it's just the same fucking person. Like you could do whatever you want. It does. It doesn't matter. It really, what what is it going to achieve? It's going to achieve nothing. Going. Oh, look at all these different faces we have. Yeah, it's the same idiot. Like I, I don't care. Like what? I don't think. Well, we need more diverse. We need like no. It's not diverse. Just because you have different colours and different religions and different ethnicities and different sexualities doesn't make it diverse you still get the same idiots if you go to a nutters convention of schizophrenics hi i'm at the schizophrenic nutter convention well how diverse is it well it's not very diverse everyone's a schizophrenic they're all schizophrenic they're all pretty much the same like really yes they are yes well isn't this real as well there seems to be a, a, a very disproportionate amount of black people here and so I'm like, all right, okay. So there's less black schizophrenics out there. Well, they're doing something right. That's about as interesting as that gets. And they're like, come on. Anyway, like as, as if as if all the things on planet Earth that were really important, this is one of them. But we're still going to go into it anyway. Why not? Why why not? Let's waste our time. Let's just waste our lives away. Might as well. You know, you could be doing something better now. You could be smoking crack and kissing your underage girlfriend right now, couldn't you? You could be doing something really worthwhile with your life. But no, you're here with me, so let's go. A chef, a scientist, and a firefighter walk into a villa. That's not very diverse as far as I'm concerned. The return of Love Island every summer has the same comforting familiarity as a lousy Christmas cracker joke. Well, of course it does. Because, I mean, look at these two imbeciles here. Look at them. Look at him. It makes no difference. It, whether he was white or Asian, he's still a cunt. Look at him. Look at what he's, look at how he's, just look at him. That's all you need to know. That sums it all up. That is a person that goes on Love Island. Is that person. And her. Look at her. I forgot about her. Hey, how you doing? But still look at her. Right. Anyway, but for the fifth series, which begins on Monday night, the most successful show in ITV2's history, well, that's not very difficult, is it? Has made some changes. What has it done? Has it, has it brought in nuclear scientists and scholars? Eh? Is it? Is that? Is that? Is that right? Has it? Is that what? Is that what happened? Has it brought in the intellectual? Has it brought in the bastions of intellect? Have been drop shipped into into fucking Love Island? Is that what happened? While well, presenter and paedophile Caroline Flack, sorry, I, I, I didn't say that. While well, presenter Caroline Flack and narrator Ian Sterling are returning as normal. Well, how mundane. Um, the show has addressed some of the issues it had last year. And what were those issues? For example, the 2019 series was considerably more contestants from ethnic minority backgrounds, something the show was previously criticised for lacking. 
that's right, because that's what matters. When I was on Love Island, there was a lot about me being the only dark-skinned girl, but it didn't really faze me much. Samira Mighty. That's a, that's a great name. <laughs> what about Samira Mighty? One of last year's contestants tells the Victoria Derbyshire show, I think it would be great to see a lot more races in there. Also, you've got to remember they've got a show to make. They will pick personalities. Yes, they will. And did anyone ever think, if you want to talk about, like, did anyone ever think that perhaps, uh, I don't know, let's say let's say there was less black people. Maybe black people have got better things to do with their time. Did you ever think that? Hmm? Maybe vacuous idiot white people are attracted to going on this show. Maybe that's just a thing. It's a possibility, isn't it? I mean, look at Geordie Shaw. I mean, come on. Just just look at it. It's a, it's a honk fest. And, and they're all idiots. And it's like, well, you know, that, that's that's the kind of thing that's attracting, you know, it's these type of people that want to go on this. Maybe black people have got better things to do. Maybe gay people have got better things to do. Who knows? Who knows? Perhaps more notably, the show also appears to have taken steps towards more body diversity. Really? What, looking at these two? What diverse bodies? I'm saying, look at him. Look at this fat bastard here. And look at her. What a frumpy cow. Oh, well done for body diversity. I'm diverse. How are you, how are you bodily diverse? Well, I have one knee bigger than the other. It's not very noticeable in this Photoshop picture. But there you go. All right. Iranian Instagram star. <coughs> and, uh, well, that's, I mean, look. They've got an Instagram star on there. Of course they have. I mean, that's as diverse as it gets. Um, has noticeably curvier frame than her fellow contestants. Brilliant. And noticeably more curvier frame. Well done, you. <laughs> you mental. <laughs> Of course, plenty of viewers were quick to say that one slightly larger contestant doesn't go far enough. That's right. They want a. You need a morbidly. If you want real diversity, you need a morbidly obese, vacuous, narcissistic idiot to put in there. Someone who can't even leave their house. They're gonna have to fucking. They're gonna have to like just carve out a hole in the roof and pull them up by helicopter and fly them over to this island and just dump them there, all sweat, sweat and everything. Body positivity campaign and actress Jamila Jamil. What, she said body positivity? No, oh, shut up. Wrote on Twitter. The producers of Love Island think the slim woman counts as their token plus size contestant. Are they drunk? You are a slim woman. And you're a model. Shush. Like, what? It's like, like you, you, your career is, your career is being given to you because of the privilege of your looks. What are you even talking about? You need to pipe down. Right, but the show's creative director, Richard Cowles, I mean, look, do you think I'm going to get the same deals? Do you think I'm going to get the same opportunities as Jamila Jamil? Are you fucking mental? Of course I'm not. I am beautiful, but I'm not that beautiful. Are you fucking crazy? Are you crazy? Shut up. I've had enough of your moaning already. Shush. Yes, we want to be as representative as possible, but we also want them to be attracted to one another. Yes, I think that's the whole point of Love Island, is it is just a stupid show. We're going, oh, how Gaz kisses M Matilda. <laughs> We're like, well, like, how deep do you think this show gets? Do you think this show is that deep? No. We're not saying that everyone that's in there is how you're supposed to look. Are you really? We're saying here's a group of people that we want to watch for eight weeks. I mean, who wants to watch? Well, ITV2 viewers want to watch it. The brain dead. The people who have been, literally been lobotomized by television. And we want to watch them fall in love. Yes, of course they're going to really fall in love as well. That's exactly what's going to happen. True love, like between a marsupial and a fucking sea cow. Sending attractive people to a villa to go dating under the sun has indeed proven to be a winning formula for the show since it launched in 2014. Well, of course it has. That's why Baywatch did so well. The last series became the most popular program in ITV2 history, with 4.3 million viewers watching the final, when both live and catch-up figures are included. Oh, well, make sure you make a note of that. Other romance base. Look at this black girl here. Like You can tell she's an imbecile. Like Just look at her. Look at her eyes. They're dead. She's dead inside. That's, that's how you know that's a Love Island person. Right. What other romance based shows such as First Dates, Naked Attraction, and Eating with My Ex? That sounds that all sounds like great. See, this is why I wonder why television isn't doing so well anymore when they're making such great content as that. 
why are people turning to the internet instead of television? I have no fucking idea. I don't know. Why are they doing it? It's mad. He's got everything there. Naked attraction. Eating with my ex. This is all great. I'm much more open to a range of ages and body types and a generally thought to be more representative of the UK population. Oh, someone... Uh, I thought it was a vacuous escapist nonsense, but no, apparently it's something representative of the people. Well, I should have known. Well, thank you. Uh, 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 but the whole appeal of Love Island, Caroline Flack told the BBC News last year, is complete escapism, guilt-free fun and enjoyment. That's right. You don't tune into... Like, why are you tuning into Love Island to feel guilty? Like, it's ridiculous. Like, come on. Most viewers aren't under any illusion. They know the show is unlikely to produce genuine romance. I think you're wrong about that. A look at last year's series shows that literally every couple, including winners Danny and Jack, have since broken up. Oh, no, have they? Most stayed together for around six months after the show, partially due to contracts they signed with talent management agencies and making a living from things like promotional nightclub appearances. Yes, the classic shit British town nightclub crap celebrity appearance. The lifeblood of British Friday and Saturday night economy. Right, but there are exceptions. Last week, 2017, contestants Jess and Dom announced they were expecting their first baby together, while Alex and Olivia from 2016 are married. Well, I feel for the kids. On the subject of casting, it's also worth noting how many of this year's contestants have existing links to fame. We've totally lost the whole diversity thing now, haven't we? Like, it's, it's just a way to hook you in, isn't it? It's just a way to get you in. We, well, they've totally forgotten what it is. This is nothing new, of course. Last year's series saw Danny Dyer's daughter, Danny Dyer, that's right, join the Islanders. But there are even more semi-famous faces and celebrity relatives among the cast this year. Curtis Pritchard, a choreographer on Irish Dancing with the Stars and brother of Strictly's AJ, and Tommy Fury, the brother of boxer Tyson Fury, are entering the villa. Well, wonderful. For them, the, fa the fame that comes with being on Love Island will be slightly less of a shock than it would be to those with less high-profile jobs, such as the firefighter and scientist they have for cast this year. This is, they've actually got a scientist? Yeah. Maybe he's one of those wacky scientists. Maybe he's a flat-earth scientist. Which brings us to one of the biggest issues of this year, the impact of fame on mental health of contestants and the aftercare offered by the show. The suicide of two former contestants. Right, how fucked up is this? Love Island runs for only a certain amount of episodes. It's been running since 2014, right? And they've had two former contestants have committed suicide. Okay, Jeremy Kyle. Thousands of episodes running for 14, 15 years or something. Thousands of episodes of some really dubiously, you know, okay people. One suicide. Removed. Which is exploit... What? Do you think Love Island is less exploitive than the Jeremy Carl show? Really? I mean, if you look at it from face value, is it? Is it really? Look at these imbeciles. They don't know no better. They, they not know what they do. That's interesting, isn't it? The issue came up again last month when ITV's Jeremy Carl show was asked. Yes. The DCMS committee then announced they would be looking into aftercare measures in the television industry and whether they go far enough. TV featuring member of the public attracts viewing figures in the millions, but in return for ratings, the broadcasters must demonstrate their duty of care to the people whose personal lives are being exposed. Well, it's not just members of the public who are on TV. How about everybody? Look at Michael Jackson. Where was the care there? But some, including Flack herself, have defended Love Island to point out, you know, um, this is how I make my income. There tends to be more than a single factor involved when a person takes their own life. Oh, you think? In one of her few press interviews to promote this year's series, she condemned the headline surrounding Phallocetus' death. It's dangerous and I'm really, really angry. It's not just that you're blaming a TV show, you're blaming people and their jobs. In life we all have a duty of care to look out for each other, but I don't think it's fair to point fingers of blame. This is a much bigger issue than just a reality TV show. And when something like bad like this, something this bad happens, I'm talking about Mike, then something this horrible and sad occurs. It's so dangerous to point fingers within hours and minutes of it happening. None of us know what's going through someone's mind and we can't sit there and speculate. It's time to think about the bigger picture, about what's going on with young men and young people and the pressures of modern life. 
Thank you, Caroline, for that. Nonetheless, ITV has taken significant steps to improve the aftercare measures in the, this year's series. Last month, the broadcaster released a long and detailed statement to reassure viewers and shareholders it was doing all it could. Oh, reassure the shareholders. Enhanced circular... I don't care what they're doing, to be honest. But speaking in March, ITV boss Caroline... McCall acknowledged aftercare for contestants could not continue indefinitely. Well, of course not. People have the right to make their own stupid mistakes, don't they? We can do everything we possibly can to look after people who do well. In reference to this year's series, she added, we will do much more, we will do much more in a much more structured way. Like last year, where issues of gaslighting and emotional manipulation were raised, there will invite be plenty of public debates around their relationships formed this year. While plenty of changes have been made to the show, there's one thing that will certainly remain the same. It isn't going to be boring. And it's not going to be any good, either. So, there is that. Yeah, um, you know, I'm just joking around. I ain't hating on people going on Love Island. Good on them. Like, they get some bank out of it. Fantastic. But, you know. Come on, shut the fuck up. 